So I practiced Camille day and night for like three or four weeks. I played like 50 plus Camille games just to make a video because I wanted to get really good at the champion again. I wanted to get the hang of the combos again and she gets nerfed. Yo, what is up? And let me just quickly tell you, no, she's not trash. You know, to answer your initial question, no, she's not broken either anymore. Yes, she is in between. Camille now is like an A tier uh, Baron laner. Basically what happened, let me tell you what happened before talking about the video. So her power curve used to go like this. So this hand is the average champion. This hand is Camille. So the average champion starts in the middle. Camille started a little higher than the middle. The average champion skills to the late game like this, like this. Camille skills like this. You see what I mean? So this is unfair. This is unfair. What happened now, you know, the average champion goes like this. Now they shifted this here to go right below the average. And the average champion still skills like this. But now Camille skills like this. You see? This. So throughout the mid game, this hand Camille is going to be weaker than the average champion. Only when you reach like level 9, because that's when her first ability upgrades to 80% true damage. That's when you'll start to notice like, hey, wait, my, I have a lot of damage. And then when you reach level 13, that's when you go back to the old Camille. So that's when she becomes an absolute powerhouse again. So don't get me wrong. Camille's not horrible. Camille is good. Like she's still good. She's still, she's still above the medium champion. Like I would rate her as a high A tier champion. By the way, if you want to skip to the gameplay immediately, there are timestamps in the description. I'm first going to explain to you guys how to build Camille because there's a few ways to build her and let's get into it. So the first and most obvious way is going for the Trinity Force, right? And essentially the build is the same. Either you, So uh, wait, wait, wait. The only difference is Trinity Force or the Divine Sunderer. So it's simple to decide what you build. If you're up against a very squishy enemy, like very, very squishy enemies, then you go for the Trinity Force. If you're up against tanks, then you go for the Divine Sunderer. And Divine Sunderer is much better than the Trinity Force in general. So basically, if the enemy only has one tank, if they have a Garen and then the rest is squishy, you can still go for the Divine Sunderer and have it be better than the Trinity Force. Because Divine Sunderer perfectly fits Camille. It perfectly fits her kit and it just gives you so much sustain and healing it's amazing it's really 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 amazing so for your second item it's completely situational hole breaker is gonna be a good choice if you want to be split pushing which camille is incredibly good at by the way like really really good so if you want to be split pushing you can get the hole breaker second item keep in mind you're going to be weaker during team fights as opposed to getting a sterix cage second item is the enemy heavy ad and do you want to team fight a lot? Then you can also get it that stance as your second item. So, as I said, you can get a hole breaker. You can, if you want to split push, you can get a Starex gauge if you want to be a bit more tanky. And you can get that stance if the enemy has a lot of AD, because this is going to be a powerhouse item in during a team fight. So third item is completely situational. Whatever you need, right? Like yet again, do you need the death stance or do you need the Starex gauge? Like basically the death stance and the Starex gauge, these are generally just really good items on Camille. You can really always build them. Only when you're against like heavy, heavy AP, then you can get the Maw of Marmortius instead of the Starex gauge. So you, your build can look like this. And if you do this, get the Hex Drinker early on just to tank up that magic damage from the early game. But this is only against heavy AP, only against heavy AP. Uh, and for your last item, always a Guardian Angel. This is an item that you always build on Camille as your fourth or fifth item. Like, don't even try to... Don't even try to build anything else. This is always going to be the worthy item to build. And for your boots, it's situational. You either go for Mercury Threats or Plated Steel Caps. These two are the boots that you want to be going for. So for the enchantments, Stasis, I don't recommend. You don't really need it as Camille. Let me tell you exactly why. So Stasis, you know, if you're up against Fizz, for example, what do you do? You need a Stasis? No. Camille has two ways to dodge Fizz's ultimate. She can dodge it with her hookshot and she can dodge it with her ultimate. So Camille's ultimate makes her untargetable. If Twisted Fate tries to stun you, you use your ultimate and block the gold card. This is exactly why you never really need a stasis enchant. If you're a skilled Camille player, you'll never need a stasis enchant. Only in some very specific scenarios where like the enemy Z is completely snowballing and you need that stasis only against the Z, right? But so what do you need? Let's say you want to be tanky in a teamfight. Then you go for the stone plate. 
And the reason that Stoneplate is super good on Camille, well, it's it's not as good anymore as it used to be because they reduced the true damage of the first ability is because, look, Stoneplate reduces your damage, right? Like while reducing damage dealt by 60%, true damage doesn't get affected by anything. So what happens is the second charge of your first ability, the true damage that it deals, is still going to deal 100% damage, regardless of you activating a Stoneplate. Your first ability, the second part, you know, depending on how much percent true damage you have, it's still going to deal the full damage. This is why Stoneplate is such an amazing enchantment to go for on Camille. You essentially dive the enemy team, use all of your abilities, and then your first ability. Then you use the Stoneplate, and while your first ability is charging to the true damage, then you shoot it again, and it's going to deal full damage. Like, you're going to be blowing their minds, because you're going to be unkillable, and you're dealing that massive true damage part, which is, of course, really, really big. Um, my favorite, however, is teleport enchant, especially when you build that hole breaker. Teleport is going to allow you to teleport, right? Like you're split pushing. And the beauty about Camille, by the way, is the reason that teleport is even better on Camille than your average champion. If you, if, if an enemy tries to go for you, you can just hook shot over a wall and then instantly teleport to your team and he won't be able to catch up to you. So it's a really, really good one. For your roots, you go for Conqueror first. You can go for Fleet Footwork, but I don't recommend it. The reason is because you can stack up the Conqueror super duper fast. Fleet Footwork is going to be great in the early game. Of course, you know, it's, it's really good early game. But Conqueror is better. Uh, Fleet Footwork got nerfed when you hit minions, so I just don't really like it on Cameo anymore. Conqueror is just much better because it's going to give you so much more damage in the later game, you know, especially when you're 1v1ing because you can stack it so easily. Basic attack first ability, second ability, basic attack first ability, and you did it. And if you use your hook shot, your ultimate, it all helps you stack it up super duper fast. Uh, by the way, Grasp of the Undying is another one that I see. I don't recommend it. Let me just say it. I really don't recommend it. Sure, it can help you do a lot of damage in your lane, but again, it's just not worth it compared to the Conqueror. Secondly, you go for Triumph or the Giant Slayer. If you're up against like a lot of champions that build a lot of HP items, you can actually go for the Giant Slayers to increase your damage, especially in the late game. This one is absolutely huge in the late game. But otherwise, Triumph is always a good one. Third one, you go for Nullifying Orb. Uh, nothing else, really. I mean, you, I, I, Hunter Titan, like, I don't really like Hunter Titan on Camille either because it's better to go for the Nullifying Orb and then Mercury Threats as well. Nullifying Orb is just way too good to not go. And then for your fourth one, you go for Demolish. This one is absolutely amazing on Camille. And the reason especially as well is because you can just proc the Demolish on the enemy turret and then Hookshot away. The Hookshot just makes, so, so, um, makes a few things so much better. It's really, really good. And then for your spells, you go for Ignite and Flash. So that is it about the build. Let's now get into the gameplay. All right, finally, finally a Camille video again. You Camille lovers have been waiting for this for really long. But let me explain to you why I haven't made a Camille video for so long. Because as you may know, I play, I play nearly every champion in the game, right? But there is a hang to it. Um, some champions take me a lot of time to get good at. And I used to be really good at Camille, but then I just didn't play her for like half a year. So what happened is my Camille became trash. So before making a new video, I really, really wanted to get good at Camille again. So I played and played and played and played for like a whole month. And then they nerfed Camille. But I, I have to make the video. And, and again, as I said, I played a lot of Camille in the new update as well, while she's nerfed and she's still good. Don't get me wrong, like this matchup right here against the Shen, you have to be careful because you're just not going to be able to outtrade him as easily. By the way, here you can see what I'm doing. I the, the reason that I am trading well with him is because I utilized my shield. This is a thing that Camille still has, which is very powerful. You know, the passive shield. When I hit the Shen, I get the physical, the physical... The physical shield, this one, you see? This allows me to trade with him. If I didn't have that shield, he would have just killed me. But you have to keep your eyes on this bar right here. You have to keep your eyes on it. And then decide based upon that bar. Okay, hey, do I want to trade or not? Here you can see I'm a bit hesitant because the bar is not filled yet. But now it's filled up again. So I can be aggressive again. You see what I mean? Like now I can go for it again. If he wants to fight me, I can easily outtrade him. Let's see. Look, I'm just constant. I'm waiting for his second ability, and now he doesn't have anything anymore. So I can try to go for a kill. Boom and boom. And the reason that I did another basic attack yet again, you have to pay attention to this shield right here. I charged up my first ability, and I comboed my flesh on him, and I killed him under the turret. 
Um, yeah, okay, so about this, 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 this is a hard combo. This is not easy. You have to practice it. And I screw this up a few times as well. But this is the way that I play champions. I limit test. You know, I, I try to go for these types of plays because this is how you get good at a champion, right? Like I could have also backed off and be like, yeah, I don't want to try that. Because if I filled my flesh, I would have just died tragically. Like he would have just killed me and I would have lost my lane. But I went for it. You know, I went for the flash combo. And again, to really get the hang of these types of combos, what you have to do, I didn't really do this enough. You'll see later on in this game, but go into practice mode and practice it on dummies. Practice it on dummies. Use your third ability. Boom. I'm not gonna hit my first ability. Now I am because against the Shen, you gotta wait for his second ability. Because if I hit him during his second ability, he's just gonna block it. Same against the Jax, for example. When Jax uses his third ability, you gotta wait with your first ability because he's gonna block it. And the beauty about Camille was her second ability is such a disgusting ability. It allows you to constantly harass the enemy and it heals you up and it slows him. Here you can see I'm just trading like this because, you know, Camille does that fine. Even though I don't have that much true damage, which, as I said, really hurts Camille, especially up against a matchup like a Shan. Because here you can see, like, the old Camille. Uh, oh. There I used my ultimate to avoid the ignite damage, and I killed him, and Triumph saved my ass. You see this? You see this? Camille got, got nerfed, but... You can still make the place. Camille is a high-skilled champion. And if you can make the place like that, she's still gonna work for you. Boom, physical shield, and I'm alive. Easily. You see? Easy. I can nearly get my um, Divine Sunderer. Yeah, as you can see, I don't quite have enough gold. I need 100 more gold. But I have to go back. I cannot wait for the gold, unfortunately. So I'm just going back and getting the item. It's not the most optimal thing to do because it's, of course, better to go back and get the Divine Sunder because it's, it's a massive power spike. But I went back anyways because I was at very at a very low amount of HP. By the way, guys, make sure you give this video a like. Also, uh, uh, put a comment under the video. Yeah, that's what I had to say. Those are the YouTuber things. And now let's enjoy the video again. You see how annoying it is. Though? Like, you just deal so much less damage than the old Camille. It's just so sad. Like... The first ability, the, the true damage, it just hurts, man. It hurts, man. It hurts to lose the old Camille. Because you guys know how Camille used to feel, right? Like where you would just do so much damage with your first ability. It was crazy. Oh, they didn't get the turret. No. That's so sad, man. Someone needs to get that turret because it's first turret. It's so important. And when you're in base with Camille, by the way, make sure you always use your third ability to just get to your lane a little bit quicker. It's going to save you like two seconds, but... If you do it five times in a game, it's going to save you 10 seconds, you see? And it's, if you do it more times, it's going to save you even more seconds. And these can be crucial, because in those 10 seconds, you can farm more minions. Oh, what was that? I flash comboed on him. Oh, he blocked my third ability. Oh. oh. Okay. As you can see, like this is this is this is this is basically some behind the scenes stuff. This video was not really supposed to be a final product. And what I mean with that, like this is how I always play the game when I'm practicing a champion for a video. I found it quite interesting to show you guys this because you like a lot of people ask me because, you know, especially during my coaching sessions. I tell the people that I coach a lot, hey guys, you need to limit test, you know, limit test. And they're like, what do you mean limit test? How do I limit test? You know, like, do I just need to turret dive? Do I just need to do stuff like that? And the answer is no, you need to make calculated plays that are risky, that are very risky. Because here to, in this game, you know, I, I went for the super risky plays because this is what limit testing is. You want to test how far you can go with your champion. You want to test how hard oh, I didn't stun him. That sucks. Oh, Shen is teleporting to him. Oh, no. We killed him. Nice. You can see, like, the damage is just so underwhelming. It's kind of crazy compared to before. Here, I wanted to go in, but then I realized, nah, it's not worth it. Because I'm only level 8. I'm going to deal 60% through damage. It's not worth it. I can't help them here either. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to push my lane. I'm going to take the heal, or I could take their blue buff. There we go. I could. Uh, there, this is also good. As a Baron laner... Especially a Camille, you can take the enemy jungle as well. Because as you can see, the enemy is busy with my team on the opposite side. I, I know that I'm losing farm in my lane. But if you if you think about it, this is totally worth it. I just took their blue buff, which is a lot of gold, a lot of experience, 
and a blue buff. I denied it from them as well. That's what you have to keep in mind of. So even though I probably lost like 100 gold from minions, it's fine because I took their blue buff. Their jungler is going to be starved because of me now. Boom! First ability. Ah! He's really destroying me right here, so I'm going out. And here, when you get ignited, a tip, by the way, when you get ignited, right after the ignite, there is still going to be anti-healing applied to you. So what you need to do, you need to wait for like two more seconds. Oh, I can fight him here. He should be dead. There we go. So when you get ignited, after the ignite is over, you need to wait for like two seconds and then take your heal. Because if you take it right after the ignite, you're going to be taking reduced healing. Because ignite reduces your healing even after the ignite. So keep that in mind. Very important. When you get ignited, just wait a little bit and then take your honey fruit. I only took one right there because I didn't want him to turret dive me and just kill me, right? By the way, about Camille, the abilities that you need to upgrade is obviously the first thing you upgrade is your first ability. But then after that, you can either do your second ability or your third ability. So let me explain. You fully upgrade your second ability if you're up against tanks. And you fully upgrade your third ability if you're up against squishies. Now, the reason why, oh, look, now I'm starting to deal damage, you see, because I do 80% true damage. Now I'm starting to deal some damage. Here I filled it, you see? I did it like 0.1 seconds too late, and I didn't get the kill because of that. I would have killed him if I hit that flash combo as well. But this is limit testing, you see? I'm testing it out. I nearly got that kill, but this makes you a better player. When you do this, this is what truly makes you a better player. Trying to go for the crazy place. Just try, try it. That's what makes you a better player. Ah. E. <gasps> I can hit him. Shield. There we go. Boom. I can't kill him though. But you see how the shield saved my ass here again? I used the shield when he dived in and it blocked his magic damage. Easy. And I survive. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. This is what Camille can do. I was talking about something. Yeah. So you fully upgrade your second ability against tanks. And the reason is because your second ability deals damage based on the enemy's max HP. So the tankier the enemy has, the more HP the enemy has, the more effective the second ability is. Your third ability, however, is going to increase your attack speed, which means your basic attacks. You're going to do more damage against squishies, you see? So when you hit your third ability on a squishy enemy, you can destroy that enemy only with your basic attacks, you know? So that's why you upgrade your third ability if you want to be focusing on squishies. And then your second ability if they have tanks, because these enemies have Thresh and, and uh, Shen. So I want to be upgrading my second ability. Also keep in mind, when upgrading your second ability or your third ability, you're reducing the cooldowns. So if, if you're in a game where you really need your hook shot up very often, where you need the mobility, you can also decide based upon that to fully upgrade your third ability. So those are a few ways to decide which ability to upgrade. But always your first ability, by the way. Never your second ability. It's just not worth it. I see some people do it. I have done it before, but now it's not worth it anymore. Because they actually nerfed Camille's second ability. It's just not worth it. I hit him. I hit him. Where is he? He went over the wall. <clears throat> Boom. Yet again, kind of underwhelming this damage. Kind of underwhelming. But when you reach level 13, that's when you do the full damage again. It's a bit tragic, I, I, I gotta say, guys. Like, against squishies, you're still gonna do a lot of damage. But against tanks, you're really gonna feel it. You're really, really gonna feel it. That you are dealing much less damage. I have Hole Breaker, by the way. And Demolish. So I'm ignoring my team here. Because when you go for these items, your playstyle needs, needs to be revolved around split pushing. So where I'm gonna fight him, right? Like, I'm not afraid of this Shen. I can win pretty easily. I have a Hole Breaker. Look, I'm thinking about turret diving him here. Boom. You see how I'm thinking about it? Now I'm actually ignoring him. Uh, I hit him this time. This time I hit him, you see? I did hit him with the stun. Ah, oh, no way he survives, right? He does, he, no. He survives. Ah. Oh. What? How, what the, how does he survive that? That is so unfair, man. I deserve that kill. Oh, I need to be a bit... <laughs> okay. All right. Ooh. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Jinx, rocket slap to your face. That is the morning coffee that you need. Woo! Jesus Christ, where did that come from? 
This guy just sniped me from downtown during my hookshot. What? <clears throat> well, this is not good. I got a hole breaker. So what am I going to do? I'm just going to ignore the Rift Herald. I'm going to go top lane. As you can see, like I know it's, I know it can feel bad when you do this because you're abandoning your team. But this is most, more often than not, the best way to play Camille, especially with a hole breaker. You split push, and then in the very late game, that's when you become an absolute powerhouse in team fights, which is after level 13. After you get level 13, now look, look, I'm not telling you to always just split push. Don't get me wrong, I'm not telling you that. I'm just saying this is a very good thing with Camille to do, split pushing. And then when you reach, the later you get into the game, the stronger you become in team fights. That's what I'm trying to tell you guys. So don't always just split push like a brain dead player. I'm going on this guy. Nah. I could have killed him, but I'm trying to run. Yeah. Yeah. I think I, I should have just killed him. I could have killed him there. Um, another tip that I have for you. This is for combos. While you, So when you click on your first ability, right after you click on it, you can already use your ultimate. So you don't have to wait out the whole animation of your second ability. You can already use your ultimate while like right after you clicked it. So what happens is you can click on your second ability and then while she's charging it up, you can also jump to the enemy to ult them with your with your ultimate and you'll hit your second ability. The reason that this is also a really good combo is because when you use your ultimate, you're going to be grounding the enemy, which slows the enemy as well. So they're going to be slowed, which means it's going to be a free hit for your second ability. It's really, really good combo right here. So again, this is a very fast combo. You have to have fast hands, but practice it in practice mode. Use your second ability and an instant ultimate. And then you can also use your third ability. There's so many combos. You know what's funny? I even have a full Camille guide where I show you all of these combos. If I don't forget, I'll put it in the description. But otherwise, you can just look up Hell's Devil Camille guide. And then there is this one video, which is an actual full Camille guide. I'll try to put it in the description. If I don't forget, I'll put it in the description. Look, my team is fighting. They just died, but I don't care. I'm just gonna push. This is Camille. This is Hole Breaker. This is Demolish. Look, I'm, I'm literally just gonna ignore this guy. Like, what is he gonna do? You see? What is he gonna do? Oh, wait. That went through the turret. Here you can see. This is the combo that I was talking about, by the way. That was exactly the combo that I was talking about. Look at this. Look at this. I'm crazy. Look, I'm not... I have no mercy on this Zix. I was just going ham on him. My entire team just died. Which is definitely not my fault, because I forced two of them to rotate to me. But I'm still going back, because yeah, I need to help them out, of course. It's not like, even though you have a hole breaker, you can still help them out. I did a good job. I pushed their, I pushed their top lane inhibitor, which is really, really nice, but now I gotta help them. Here you'll see my finger slipped. What happened here is my finger slipped from my screen. So my third ability didn't go through. It was kind of tragic because my finger literally slipped or something. I remember when this happened because I wanted to use my third ability, but it just didn't go through. So maybe it's my phone. I need a new phone, to be honest. I should buy a new phone. Yeah, yeah, I should buy a new phone. I just don't really know which one to buy. There you go. Easy catch. I'm having a lot of lagging FPS drops on this stupid Samsung. Unbelievable. You'd think that a Samsung is good, but it's like the worst phone ever for gaming. It's like horrible. I've never seen such a bad phone in my life for gaming. I thought it would be good, but yeah. I guess that's wrong. Even though it's, uh, you know, it's these big flagship phones. They're still trash. It's funny. <laughs> what is happening in the chat even? I still don't have enchantments, by the way, because I could get... Ah, uh, yeah, interesting that I didn't go for enchantment. It would have definitely been really good in this particular game to go for uh, teleport boots. I told Tamir that I'm going to ult Jinx because Jinx is the big problem. She needs to be taken care of. Boom, I hit a guy over the wall. I'm just waiting for Jinx. There you go. There she is. Boom, boom. I There we go. Easy. I killed the important target there and we just win the game. This is what this is what I mean with late game. I have essentially played Camille perfectly in this game. I've been split pushing all the way up until the late game. Now that I reach level 13, I'm team fighting. 
and we won the game because of it because i altered jinx and she couldn't escape because yeah that's how kami works and now we just win the game so thank you guys so much for watching let's actually see how much damage i did this game because that's going to be an interesting graphic as well so let's take a look at how much damage i did and everything like that how much damage i tanked and you know all those kinds of stats Okay, let's see. Oh, I was at 600 LP. I'm at like 700 now. Ooh, I got MVP as well this game. Let's see. There we go. 21.7 thousand damage. And I tanked the most damage as well. Interesting, isn't it? So thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the video. And uh, yeah, I'll see you all in the next Wild Rift video. Bye-bye.